like Tom. <laughs> be like Look like Carol, guys. Vicky's life is dominated by obsessive rituals. She is in a constant battle to try and control her son's smell. We have to do this every day to his room. You can literally just smell the, um, the fish on his bed clothes and on his pillows. It just lingers in the whole room. I mean, it follows him around. So it's just a case of constantly cleaning his room. But Vicky is resigned to living like this. Just gets um, quite tedious, really. I mean, to strip his bed every day, but you, you know, you get used to it because you don't want friends coming around from school and going in his bedroom and thinking his bedroom's dirty and smelly. So it's a constant um, thing with washing all his um, bed clothes and his sheets and his quilts and his pillows. Everything has to be washed and cleaned daily. <laughs> Thomas attends the local primary school, where most of his classmates accept his fishy smell. He copes with his condition by being open about it, and can confide in his best mate. Yeah, me, me and Lou from the same team, and Louis, she won't, if I'm not telling something, he won't tell anyone. He's sort of my closest, bestest friend because he knows all about what I've got and he like, won't tell anyone. It's kind of like freaky how like I have it because I've not, I've not like ever heard of it before. Sometimes when you like breathe by look and actually smell something weird. Do you it for sure? So it could, it could, that's what it probably would actually be for Charlotte, it could be. Hey, would you think it would be good if you brush your teeth when you had it? Do I? No, you have fish it, or something? No, because it cleans my teeth. If it was on my teeth, well, it wouldn't clean my body. Right? I would have thought it would, um, like, if the next day it could still be in between the teeth and you like, I don't know, you could just have a drink and it'll wash down and you'd start smelling again. So I thought it would probably be important to brush it out. For now, Thomas is relaxed about his condition. But how will he cope when he finds out it's starting to get worse? I would never tell somebody that they don't smell nice. It's not a very comfortable thing. I think it's something I find quite difficult to do. Um, it would be, it'd be an awkward thing to have to say. I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. But then again, I would like someone to tell me if I smell. No one dares tell us, but we all smell. Every single one of us has our own individual order. But just how distinctive is our personal smell? Smell expert Martin Corbett has recreated a well-known experiment to find out how recognisable our personal order really is. We all have our own smell, but it's often quite difficult to detect because we spend so much time disguising that smell. People who are intimate with each other tend to know their smells. To prove his point, Martin asks a group of men to build up a smelly sweat by working out as vigorously as possible. We give off smell mainly through sweat, and so he wants the guys to build up a good sweat so they can give off the full flavour. It doesn't take long before all the guys' shirts are ringing with their own very pungent body odours. It's now up to one of the men's girlfriends to try and sniff out which one is her boyfriend's best. By the smell alone. 
I thought, oh no, I'm going to really upset him by uh, picking the wrong one. Can she really pick out her lover from these ten stinky shirts? Number seven. So it's true. Our body order is as individual to us as our fingerprints. I can't really imagine being in love with somebody whose smell I didn't like. I think it's a very important thing for me. Rachel understands only too well the problems of smelling bad. It has made her feel so isolated that she spent most of her 20s traveling in Asia. It just feels much more relaxed almost like you can kind of breathe there more easily you can just be yourself now 32 rachel is determined to start a life back in the uk but she's not finding it easy as soon as the plane lands in england it feels as if you're walking into a sterile environment where you it's almost as if nothing is real I feel a sense of dread whenever I come back and I feel almost trapped, I suppose. Just the way that society is, I don't fit in, I'm not, I'm not acceptable here. Just like Rachel, Carol feels completely unaccepted in her world. In the back of my mind all the time is this problem. Very, very isolating, very isolating. Carol has been so terrified of subjecting others to her smell that she avoids people as much as possible. Even the busy school run keeps her hidden in the car streets away. I don't want to get too involved. I don't want to sort of make, you know, too many friends because then that might lead me into a situation that makes me feel uncomfortable. I try to keep my distance, really. Now you've got your bullet. As Carol has a mild form of the condition, amazingly she has managed to hide her fish order syndrome from her family. Even her husband Steve didn't know about it for over 15 years. Carol has been very careful to disappear probably off to the bathroom to make sure that no one, even me, wasn't aware of it. He does know now about the problem, um, but our way of dealing with it is really not to talk about it. On the surface, Carol and Steve look like a typical happy family. But in reality, life has been anything but that. It all felt very dark, really. My life felt very dark because I felt ashamed. I've considered, really have considered suicide, but I've got two children, I've got a husband, I couldn't do anything like that. There was a time when I sort of really hoped that I would get a terminal illness because I thought, at least then, that's my way out. I'm not doing it on purpose. Despite her brave face, Carol is at breaking point and wants her life back. She's considering opening up and letting people get close to her for the first time in years.